All right, so today the Outriders dev team released a sort of preview patch notes. So let's get into this. Hello, everyone. We would like to thank everyone in the Outriders community for our patience, support, and assistance. Everyone on the Outriders team is continuing to work hard on improving the game, and we'd like to share news about the things we are focusing on. Please use Control F to jump to the information that interests you the most. Patch news, community appreciation package, inventory wipes and restoration, rebalancing multiplayer stability and connection, connectivity post-mortem. Okay, so for the patch notes. First patch, this is our first big patch for the main Outriders game. As of today, the deployment of this patch is scheduled for next week, as we are using this week to identify as many severe issues as possible, fix them, and then thoroughly test the changes across all platforms. Submission through platform holders adds on a little bit of time as well, which is why we are not able to deploy this patch any earlier. I assume they're just talking about going through uh, the console processes of getting your game on the game like getting your game updated the certification product process we are doing our utmost to deliver you a stable patch as soon as possible and we are continually looking at ways to bring the patch release day earlier this is why we are not yet committed to a patch release date as we still be as we may still be able to release the patch before such a date okay we will let you know as soon as we have confirmed release schedule so please do keep an eye on our social channels and in particular our twitter Okay, so here's the first patch, patch notes. We'll, we'll fix a performance issue where a GPU is not being fully utilized. This should help with shuttering and DX11 and DX12 issues. Once platforms have been upgraded to the same patch version, crossplay across platforms will become viable again. Overall stability improvements for the matchmaking service, crash fixes, bunch of crash fixes for multiplayer, Fix the HUD disappearing in certain cases. Fix bugs that interfere with players respawning in multiplayer expeditions. Fix bugs with players getting stuck on geometry, including when using Gravity Leap or falling out of the world. Okay, that's good. We'll change the default matchmaking setting from open to close. This is important. You will still be able to manually change the setting to open through your game settings. This change will prevent players from joining games where the host didn't intend to play in multiplayer. It will also cut down on AFK lobbies. This will also help improve matchmaking times as the queues will be less likely to be overwhelmed by the sheer volume of constant matchmaking requests generated by open games. Many other minor fixes and improvements. So the matchmaking thing, that's very important because it's like myself, I don't really ever intend to play online with other people. I don't think I ever went in the settings and chose one way or the other. So if mine was already listed as open, that means... I mean, I wouldn't have, like, kicked someone if they joined me, but that means that when they were searching for a game, when someone else was searching, their game would have potentially, like, pinged my game to see if it was a stable connection or however their matchmaking prioritizes connections. So now that it's going to be disabled in this example, mine is going to be turned off. So now it's just not going to ping me or whatever. So now there's only going to be... It's going to lower the population of the people that are actually wanting to play online so increasing the likelihood that you actually get a good game and then that paired with the afk lobby thing that'll be nice outriders community appreciation package after working on outriders for more than five years we were as disappointed as you that the launch weekend did not go as planned we ran into connectivity issues which we have explained in full further below honestly it wasn't as bad as i thought it would be like it was actually pretty good compared to other games. And, like, almost every game that has an online component and some sort of server requirement goes through these issues on the launch day, launch week, or whatever. Throughout all of this, we really appreciate all your messages of support and encouragement, and they help us power through the, and improve the situation. We would like to thank each and every one of you. Beyond just saying it, however, we would like to confirm that we are working on a small appreciation package for our launch window players. We're still working through the exact details of it, but our intentions are as follows. All players who played between March 31st and April 11th, Central Time Zones, are eligible. Any players outside of the above window, but for whom will have performed an automatic inventory wipe restoration, are also eligible. Your highest leveled character will receive a level appropriate legendary weapon, a level appropriate amount of titanium, the emote frustration, which is otherwise unobtainable at this moment in time, the irony here was not intentional, but is fitting. 
with the whole emote being called frustration. These are our intentions, but these details are subject to change based on what is technically feasible for us to do. We are still determined when the appreciation package will be delivered. All right, that's pretty cool. So basically, if you played in the launch week, then you're going to get some free stuff. So get your character level up before they give us the time frame. They should give us a time frame before it goes, like before they launch this. So you should be able to level up your character all the way up to get a guaranteed like free legendary. I mean, I guess that's nice. Inventory wipes and restoration. We believe that the rate of this bug appearing should be greatly reduced once the upcoming patch has been published. With crash fixes in place, we intend to run a one-off mass restoration. Here are our intentions for this restoration. Restoration should take place on a specific day and should be a one-time event. The exact day is 2 BC, but we're hoping for this to occur in the coming week. We will update you when we have confirmation of date and timings. We will only be able to restore the most valuable tiers of lost items. Example, epics and legendaries. We will be unlikely to restore an inventory full of blue gear. Okay, that's fair. The restoration should be additive to your inventory. It should not replace your current inventory. Restored items may not have the exact same stats as the lost items. Note th that restoration will not be possible for items that were acquired, but where the game connection was terminated before an autosave could complete, as those items would never have made it into your server inventory logs. Such suspended autosaving is noticeable when the yellow autosave icon stays active for a longer period of time. All right. For an individual restoration that were missed on that occur in the future, we plan to equip our teams to help in, on an ad hoc basis. Please note that these are our intentions that we are providing here for transparency. While we will try our hardest to make things right, we unfortunately cannot make guarantees for the specifics of the above or the timeline of this, as we may run into technical difficulties that delay our work. The accolades wipe issue is something we're again looking into whether we can run as part of a such a one-off restoration or whether we will need to tackle these case on a one-to-one -one basis. Accolades are a more complex piece of data per profile than a piece of equipment, so working through a solution here is taking a little more time. All right, so there's the inventory wipes and restorations sort of thing. I mean, that, that sucks that your, people's inventory is getting deleted or their accolades. Although the accolades, like, yeah, it's such a minor little thing. You get some car upgrades. General balance notes. Historian Bounty Hunter and Monster Hunt Quest no longer grant legendary items for each subsequent completion. This kind of sucks. While rewarding players for completing all of the Historian Bounty Hunt and Monster Hunt Quests is still our intention, we did observe unintended results when players repeated this activity in combination with a specific multiplayer bug. With this reward adjustment, we want to eliminate this exploit behavior while still making the quest line worth the effort. Players who took advantage of this exploit will not be punished. That's good. Will not be punished. Adjust loot and specific enemies. Tuka Beast, Split Tooth, Sand Shifter, and Cold Claw. These particular beasts are being too generous considering they require effort to take them down. Oh. Consider the required effort. Ah, I mean, okay. That's... Weird. Chem plan. Expedition time for gold, silver, bronze adjusted to 650, 1150, 1500 seconds. Previously 950, 13, 1650. Okay, so they're making this one harder. The chem plant. You have to do it faster. Boomtown. Expedition time to gold, silver, bronze adjusted to 390, 589, 776 from 422, 607, and 792. So again, they're making this a little harder. Okay. Some expeditions seem to be too generous in their required completion times when compared to others. We want to avoid such disproportionate discrepancies as we believe making all expeditions viable leads to a more diverse and thus more interesting in-game. Okay, so they basically don't want people just running one expedition to farm loot. Crit rating damage multiplier on tactical assault rifle reduced to 165%, previously 175%. Okay. Okay. Critical rating damage multiplier on marksman rifle reduced to 250%, previously 300%. Marksman rifles with their 300% crit rate showed up to be dominating multiple crit builds. By making the modifier the same as for the bolt action rifle, we want to offer players more options when choosing that what gun to use. Okay, now this statement is kind of making me a little worried about how they're going to be balancing the game. 300% crit rate showed up to be more dominant multiple crit builds. 
they're being used a lot. That's basically what they're saying. I'm not a fan of that sort of balancing, but let's see. Let's move on. Duration of the Massacre AP buff has been reduced to 3 seconds. This is a temporary measure until we have a fix in issue for the stacking cap. Okay. Bullet abilities. Twisted rounds, blighted rounds, and volcanic rounds. While we fully intend to provide the overpowered feel for the best builds out there, we are also committed to making sure that there is build diversity in the top performing builds. Late in the demo lifecycle, we discovered a bug with regards to the bullet augmentation abilities damage calculation formula. While we fixed this bug, some unforeseeable imbalances were unfortunately introduced, which has led to bullet-based abilities vastly outperforming other skills. The main problem with this is that such bullet-based builds require much less investment to make them top tier compared to other builds. To achieve this, we have made a couple adjustments for the Trickster and Technomancer classes, who benefit the most from their bullet abilities power. It's uncertain as to whether these changes will prove too strong or too weak, so please do consider this to be only the first step as we will continue monitoring and adjusting them in the future. Just like you, we hope to see more inspri inspiring and crazy combination of abilities and mods. I thought this wasn't a live service. It's very interesting how they are, like, going to be very scrutinous over, like, the abilities and stuff and like balance the base cooldown of twisted round skill has increased to 25 seconds previously 16 seconds okay i mean that's not really okay while infinite uptime of bullets abilities was always our intention it is intended to be high risk high reward playstyle. however given the current power of this skill there is very little risk involved in this ability given its short cooldown even when players fail to trigger ammo replenishment, increasing its cooldown in combination with adjusting its damage should increase that risk and make this playstyle a more thrilling experience. I mean, this isn't really that big of a nerf, honestly. It's like 9 seconds longer for the cooldown. But like for me, for example, when I'm using this, I just get kills to get like all my ammo back. <laughs> like, okay, uh, uh, whatever, we'll move on. Trickster Hero Tree Nodes, Disruption Firepower, Scion of Power, Outrider Executioner have had their power reduced to 35%, previously 50%. Oh wow, that's a pretty big. The combination of Twisted Rounds increases the of firepower on top of the multipliers provided by the class tree led to huge increases of damage dealt by this ability. While we do understand the satisfaction this kind of power can bring it, it is currently vastly outperforming our wildest expectations and we therefore needed to bring it down a notch. Again, I'm not a big fan of this whole, like, people are using it, let's nerf it. Vulnerable status. Power reduced to 15%, previously 25%. The Technomancer Hero Tree node, damage against poison, has had its power reduced to 15%, previously 30%. Okay, so this is basically, people are probably just going to change the, like, fro the Frost version. While the Technomancer's Blight of Rounds do not provide any damage increase on their own, other than ignoring armor as anomaly damage, they do provide an excellent tool for pr spreading the vulnerable and toxic, toxic statuses, which in turn can scale out of proportion. The Pyromancer Hero Tree node, Trial of Ashes, has been reduced 15% extra damage, previously 30%. Wow, 50%. Yeah, okay. Multiplayer stability and connection. Co-op and multiplayer sessions are a separate matter from solo play connectivity. Launching a multiplayer session requires multiple different partners and services, for example. Matchmaking and queuing are hosted by one service partner, while the peer-to-peer -peer relay is handled by another. Other components are hosted by other partners. This is normal setup for multiplayer games, but is important to mention because we, when we attempt to track multiplayer or co-op issues, knowing exactly what issue appears at what point is vital. The upcoming patches should help alleviate crashes in multiplayer as well as improve stability and speed. Because of the complexity of the multiplayer, multiple systems involved, we will continue to improve and iterate upon these systems in order to deliver you a better multiplayer experience. In most cases, this can and has already been done via the backend without patching the game, but is something we are keeping a close eye on. Alright, so multiplayer should have better connections. That's pretty good. Okay, here we go. The Connectivity Postmortem, the TLDR. Our team worked through the Easter weekend and around the clock to resolve the server issues players were experiencing. We completely understand how frustrating this experience will have been, especially given the huge amount of players eagerly anticipating the launch. We had enough server scaling capacity, but our externally hosted database was seeing issues that only appeared at extreme loads. Man, that's kind of sad. They worked over Easter. I kind of feel bad for them, because like, I feel like most people would not have been playing video games. I mean, maybe, but, you know, it's kind of sad. We're committed to full transparency with you today, just as we have been over the past years. 
so we won't give you the expected server demand was too much for us. We were in fact debugging a complex issue with why some metric calls were bringing down our externally hosted database. We did not face this issue during the demo launch earlier this year. Our database is used to hold onto everyone's gear, legendary's profile, and progression. And then they give like very tech specific issues. There's something about RAM and swap disk that one they were using a swap disk, but they should have been using RAM. So if you want to read this, you can find it on their Discord or on my Discord in the link below. We have a news channel that tracks all the Outriders news that gets published to their own Discord. But uh, that's basically it. On the nerfs, I mean, I don't know. We'll have to see how it plays. I'm not a big fan of this whole... What I'm getting the vibe is that they're balancing based on usage rates. If you've seen anything, I've talked about Destiny. I'm not a big fan of this. I'm not not a fan of usage rate balancing. I think it's very, very dangerous because there's always going to be a meta. There's always going to be a best option. It's very hard to like make that meta very broad. And these are pretty these are pretty drastic nerfs, honestly. Now the weapon nerfs, those aren't that big of a deal. It's only fifty difference on that one and only 10 difference on that one so that but the bullet abilities these are the big nerfs um i don't know they should have put some buffs in here if they're also going to nerf it like yeah i don't know we'll just have to see there's currently maintenance on the game so i can't play it right now but i think it's very very dangerous to go down this path of usage rate balancing because, like, what's going to happen next? Okay, we've seen that everyone's using this ability. Uh, the cryo turret. We've seen that everybody's... 95% of people are using cryo turret in their builds. Okay, so we're going to nerf that. We're going to make it a twice as long cooldown. And it only has a chance of freezing or something like that. It's like... You gotta, you gotta be very careful when you do stuff like basing it off of usage rates. So I'm not a big fan of what this seems like. Now, hopefully this is not the only thing that they're using to buff and nerf things. I do hope we see some buffs soon. I get it if there's an outlier, like one particular outlier, it's all right to nerf that. It's that that's fair. That's fair. You know, you got to be got to be honest. I think it's a bit ridiculous to do all three of these. I didn't realize that the trickster and the pyromancer had this similar ability in the sense that like they had the same mods on their armor that let them get a full magazine back. I thought it was just the Technomancer, because I haven't played the other two classes, or the other three, really. I know the Devastator doesn't, because he's like Brockman. He's the thing, basically. Um, yeah, that's basically all I have to say. If you want to see more video I put out, hit the subscribe button with the bell notification to be notified of videos I put out. And if you like this video, a thumbs up is appreciated. And if you want to support me, feel free to take a snap of that QR code up there and sign up for Robinhood. You'll get yourself a free stock and I will get a free stock. I'm not being paid to say this. I'm not sponsored by Robinhood in any way. I actually use it. Um, other than that, thanks for watching and have a good day.